If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, fine. Here it is. Only because everyone has been begging me non-stop. So, Dustin Poirier versus Islam Mahachev, it is very fast approaching. And this is a very interesting matchup in the sense that everybody, and, and, and I mean everyone, wants to see Dustin Poirier win this fight. And if you don't, you either don't have a heart, or you're Muslim, or both. Because Poirier, he's been around forever, his resume is absolutely insane, he beat Conor McGregor one time, and this is his last shot at the title, period. This has storybook ending written all over it. If Dustin pulls this off and he beats Islam, they are 100% making a movie about this guy one day. But here's where the issue arises with all of this. This fight for Dustin is pretty much as much of an uphill battle as you can physically get. We all know Dustin, he has always struggled against really high level grapplers, but on the feet he can strike with anybody. But Islam is so well rounded. He's so well rounded that it's almost depressing. And what's interesting about that is, you know, if you look at Islam's wrestling, it is not the best in the division. The best is Gamrot with Armin closely behind him. He's not the best at submissions either. Charles Oliveira is the best at submissions. And he's not the best striker either. That title goes to Chase Hooper. But he can still hang with all of those guys in those areas. And nobody puts it all together like he does. He just simply does not have a weakness. There is no area of his game that you can exploit. And because of that, the thing he is so good at is shutting you and your skill set down and only playing his game. What was Charles Oliveira so good at? Constantly being in your face, overwhelming you with pressure, and being able to jump onto submissions and have a high proficiency at finishing them. So what did Islam do? He constantly backed away every single time Charles tried to enter into range. He'd lunge in with the occasional shot, then get back out of range again. And it was the same thing with the grappling. He was willing to be on top in Oliveira's guard, but as soon as he started attacking his legs, he got up and then ran away, which is just the smart move. In his first fight with Volkanovski, Volk caught everybody off guard by being able to hang with him in all the grappling exchanges. Nobody expected him to do that. Habib and Islam both, what they're so good at is just overwhelming guys with top pressure on the ground, wearing them out, breaking them, and then taking whatever submission their opponent leaves out there because of how exhausted they are. But Volkanovski is unbreakable. That strategy just did not work against him. It doesn't matter what kind of pace you put on him. He's going to match it and then push harder than you. And that's exactly what happened at the very end of the fight. And that's why in the rematch, after realizing this, Islam didn't even try to grapple with him. He just used his diverse skill set, set up the head kick, and knocked him out. So the key to beating Islam Mahachev realistically, skill for skill, is actually pretty simple. You need to be somewhat comparably as well-rounded as he is. And there needs to be an aspect of your game that is so elite that you are going to cause him serious problems. And does anybody at 155 have that ability? I don't think so. Now, Islam has made it very, very clear that unlike Habib, he wants to challenge himself and move up weight classes. And you know, honestly, I think someone like Leon Edwards is kind of who I was describing. Now, he's very well-rounded, great with submissions, not being at altitude, he hung in there with Kamaru Usman and all the grappling, and then did the exact same thing with Colby Covington. And his striking would be a serious issue for Islam to overcome. So, with all of that being said, I'm sure you understand now that Dustin Poirier is not beating Islam Mahachev skill for skill. We're gonna need a Hail Mary here. Okay, where does Dustin have any advantages? The clear one is the boxing. He has the best pure boxing in the entire division, but the problem with that is, can he impose that on Islam? Because Mahachev is so, so, so ungodly risk-adverse. I, I guarantee you this, he is going to do everything in his power to avoid boxing with Dustin, period. I mean, if he goes out there and really tries to brawl with Dustin, then the only logical solution for that is the Mandela effect, and obviously I came from another universe where he just doesn't do things like that, because I, look, this is what he's going to do. 
He is going to stay on the outside, and he is going to only throw kicks. I mean, Islam does have very, very good kicks. And the second Dustin tries to close the distance, Islam is going to go all the way in and clinch with him. Where, again, he's going to have a huge advantage. But going back to skill sets, judo is definitely where Islam excels. I mean, that is where he is the best in the division. Mix that in with how strong he is with the tie clinch and throwing knees to the body just to bait you into throwing your own knee so he can hip toss you. It's a serious problem. And he can still time singles and double legs off of Dustin's entries. His wrestling isn't quite as clean as his judo. Sometimes he kind of has to grind through his takedowns a bit, but they're still super effective. You know, speaking of, Islam actually came out and said that Dustin has got submitted in all of his title fights and that he has been working on something special for him. I can almost certainly tell you it's going to be the Von Flu choke. I mean, it just, it just makes too much sense. The Von Flu choke is when if you shoot a takedown on your partner, and they attempt to guillotine you, but you jump around their guard. If they don't let go of the guillotine quick enough, you can then trap their arm with your head and then use your shoulder pressure to put them to sleep. It is a very, very tight submission. And if there's one thing we know about Islam, his shoulder pressure is something to fear. So when you take into account Dustin's sheer willpower and drive to want to finish the guillotine, this one seems like a no-brainer for me. He's going to try to Von Flu choke him, which I, I do think is a real possibility. I mean, that would, be, that would be something to see that. But with all this being said about Islam's skills, does Dustin have any paths to victory? As we already said, as far as striking goes all around, you know, it's pretty close, but Dustin is the way better boxer. While Islam has the advantage in the grappling, in the clinch, he has way better cardio, which personally I contribute to Meldonium. If Dustin's not taking anything, he should probably start. So yeah, like I said, uphill battle, but Dustin does have some things going for him in this matchup. It's a bit of a long shot, but... A big key to Dustin having a better shot of winning this fight is to not allow himself to get backed up to the fence. Because Islam is going to be so careful not to overextend, this will give Dustin the opportunity to fight out in the open more. So what he needs to do is stay very defensively sound, do a lot of feinting on the outside, show Islam that if he wants to close the distance and clinch, you're going to be looking for counters. And since they're both southpaws, Dustin Poirier has his low outside calf kick. It is one of his best weapons against fellow southpaws. In the first fight against Volkanovski, Islam did not do a very good job checking the leg kicks, and it actually had an effect on him towards the end of the fight. So on the feet, that has to be the primary goal. Kill Islam's lead leg, and then once it's dead, start moving in with the hands. Dustin does have one entry in the striking that I really, really like. He used it against Habib, Max Holloway. It's very effective. As he jabs, he takes a step forward, switching from southpaw to orthodox. He then throws the overhand right. It may not seem like it from the outside, but that step forward is a real sneaky way to close the distance. For the entirety of the fight so far, you've been just on the outside of Dustin's punches. But then all of a sudden, he's just a little bit closer than he was before. And that's what allows him to land. Now, as far as the grappling goes, this is a bit trickier. Now, I honestly do not see a reliable way that Dustin can keep standing back up safely. I mean, that's gonna be that's gonna be tough. Islam's top pressure, it's not like Habib's folk style approach. He uses a lot more freestyle wrestling and jujitsu. He's always looking to make you turtle so he can take your back, which, while different than Habib's style, is still just as effective at preventing you from getting back up because he is so dangerous with those back takes. But there's one mistake Islam makes all the time when he takes your back that I think Dustin Poirier can take advantage of, and that is crossing his feet. He has done this many, many times, and this is a big no-no in the world of grappling, and that is because if you hook your opponent's leg while they have their feet crossed, and then you hip forward, you get them in a very nasty footlock. But the one thing people do sometimes, and it's the wrong thing to do, is they're going to put one foot like this. Bring your foot on top of the first foot. And now you take your other foot and you cross it over like this, like a triangle, okay? So now I'm leaning on the mat so I don't crush him, but in reality, you bridge onto the person. 
Okay, so I'm going to lean on the mat and now I'm going to raise my hips. Didn't take much. Now, here's the thing, right? Would Islam tap to this? No, probably not. But you could genuinely really hurt him in a position like that. And in a fight that is as much of an uphill battle as this one is, we will take what we can get. If he really wrenches on his ankle, does some damage to Islam's foot, he's not going to want to go back to that position again. Next thing you know, his movement's compromised, he can't kick as well, that's when the calf kicks really start flying. That's where Islam starts getting desperate, and that is where Dustin lands a clean shot right on the chin that puts him out. Now, is this a bit of a Hail Mary? Yes. Is it borderline delusional? No. It is fully delusional. But that is not going to stop me from praying for this outcome every single night until this fight happens.